Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Erin with Lady Poe Designs. I've got all pumpkins here for you tonight, even a pumpkin crepe. So I really think you're gonna like them. First, we're gonna head into the cottage pumpkins. We're using Debbie's DIY cottage paint. We've got the Americana color, the gray skies, and the crockery. These are just scrap two by fours. And I don't know the dimensions. I just cut them in three equal pieces. So we're going to do one coat on each two by four. We're going to start out with the Americana. Um, I do have the DIY brushes. I just don't use them with the cottage paint because these have built in top coats and you're not supposed to use the DIY brushes with them. You can technically, but I'm lazy and I do not wash my brushes immediately and it can ruin your brush. So just FYI, if you have the DIY brushes and you choose to use the cottage paint, wash it immediately or you will ruin your brush. Uh, this is the crockery. The first, the one before that was gray skies and the first one was Americana. And like I said, I'm doing one coat on each side, front side, uh, back, corners everywhere <laughs> and we're going to use I'm showing you right here because of the top coat these dry darker the clay paints dry lighter so that's the difference between the two and we're going to use the transfer Elysium these these flowers are, are really pretty they're they go with the pastel cottage paints very well um, if you've never used transfers, they have a little bit of a tack on the back. So when you lay it down, it will stick a little bit, not very much. Um, that's why the top coat is good because it will not peel up with the tack. But they come with this transfer stick, so you just rub it down. Um, I like to peel it up as I go. So you just stick a little bit of your finger underneath the carrier sheet and just kind of glide it up. I think they call it riding the wave <laughs> is what they say. Um, but as you rub it on, you just peel it up, use the back of that sheet. That's called burnishing. You rub that transfer down, make sure all of these edges are down so it doesn't lift up on anything. Right here, you'll see I lay it down. Some of these have lettering on it. It's very small. I notice right here, that I have it upside down. Whoopsie. I have to flip it around. No harm, no foul. Looks good either way. That's a good thing about these transfers. You can layer them. You can cut them up. You do not have to lay these down the way they come in the book. Cut them up. Lay them down the way you want. That is the beauty of the IOD transfers. They're so versatile. So I'm rubbing this down. I intended to put it the other way, but it looks good this way too. So I'm going to just bend it around the corner. Sometimes they can crack if you're going around a short or short, if you're going around a sharp corner. So be careful. But these are very rounded edges. I'm going to burnish that down. And let's do the third one. I did a very detailed fussy cut around that daisy because I didn't want any of the blue on it and see to the left I cut the excess off but I'm not gonna scrap that I do not throw away my scraps <laughs> so I'm gonna take those and put them off to the side and use them in my negative space so very, very little do I ever waste of these transfers. So for my stumps, I'm going to use drawer pulls that my husband got from his job off some cabinets they were throwing away. So I'm going to use that. And I'm, I want very simple decor on the top of these. So I'm going with some stained tea towels that I've ripped up and some lace that I got from burlap.com. And 
I got two strips of tea towel and one strip of lace. So very, very simple. So we're just going to tie that around the top and just one simple, just one knot. And I'm going to cut it at an angle on the bottom and let it drag on the desk. Kind of like a shabby chic, if you want to call it that, but I like it. And just as a reminder, guys, I do get all of my DIY products, Roy Cycled Papers, and IOD products from Sammy at Unicorn Dust Designs. I'll have her information linked in the description box below. I ended up doing that to all three. And I did end up tying a part of the tea towel at the top just to secure it. But none of that is glued down except for the knob. But I think these turned out really cute. I love the transfers on them. And I've never really tried pastels for fall, but I don't think they're all that bad. Um, like I said, I like the transfers. I love the knobs. And anything that looks antique to me is wonderful. What do y'all think? Tell me what y'all think in the comments. Okay, next up we've got fairy pumpkins. These are so cute. So I got a landscape timber from Lowe's. And we're going in with gypsy green, sandy blonde, and cherry picked. And we're just going to do a dry brush on each of them. We're not going to fully coat these because I do want that rustic um wood to show through um i did coat these with um dark and decrepit just a little bit a very very light coat because these were pressure treated uh so they had a little bit of a green tint and i didn't want to fully cover that up i wanted the green i wanted the brown so i wanted to keep both um you'll see they have a big split in the back so this was on the discount pile so I'm, I got it for free. <laughs> so this is the Sandy Blonde. The big one I did cherry picked. And the medium I did Gypsy Green. So I'm actually going to go back over and just very, very lightly dry brush the Sandy Blonde over the cherry picked and the Gypsy Green. So just to tie them in with each other, just so they all match. Now I'm going to go in with the liquid patina because I don't want a sheen on these, so I'm not going to use Big Top or anything, but I do want to seal the paint because I'm going to be gluing stuff to these and I'm going to be putting transfers on them. So I do want to seal the paint, but I don't want that much of a sheen and liquid patina does not give you that much of a sheen. It gives you just a little bit, but it doesn't give you a big one. So we're going to go in with our fairies. They're so cute. So I picked three. Uh, for the cherry picked one, I picked the one with the big mushroom hat. She's so cute. But just like the other transfers, we're going to lay it down. Grid side up. Tack sag down. And going to start rubbing. And you're just going to take your finger underneath the side of that carrier sheet and just lift as you scratch and you just go all the way till it comes uh, they're so easy to put on guys if you've never used transfers please just give them a try they're so easy it makes crafting so easy look how cute she comes out oh i can't wait till you see it come on get that piece off Look at her. So I already did the other two. But I'm going to go back over all of them with liquid patina just to lock those images in. I did those on the first three as well. I locked those um, those images in. Uh, just so that it doesn't peel up. Um, 
So I'm just going to put one coat just on the transfer. I'm not going to coat the entire pumpkin again or landscape timber, but just on the transfer itself. But then we're going to get the green floral um, moss and I'm going to kind of make like a frame around each fairy and then just put it randomly around the landscape timber wherever I feel like it needs to go. And then I'm going to pick a little stump out of my jar O stumps. I think I've got like four of those jars. They're huge. Um, and that's the one. I picked that one because it was split and it was really cool looking. And it had a little part on the side where I could put more moss. So, <laughs> so I was like, ooh, perfect. So I'm going to put some more moss on that. I didn't show it on here, but I go back in later and get that brown moss that I used in last week's video from Target. And I added it to that green for just a little bit of contrast. Afterwards, I was like, oh, it needs something else. And I didn't want to put flowers. So I went back and got the brown floral moss and added it. And it turned out so cool. I was like, dang, why didn't I put it in there to begin with and like mix it? Oh, that would have looked so cool. But yeah. It, they still turned out really pretty. So I just, I outline each fairy with the moss, kind of, like I said, like a frame around each one. So I'm just showing you one more time that I'm just, I'm lining directly around where the image ends. You can still kind of see where the image ends. Like I'm like literally on the line. And then I just fill in around her. Look how they turned out. These turned out so cute, y'all. I love the fairies. This is... See, they're not just for Christmas. These are pumpkins. And look how cute they are. I love them. Tell me what y'all think in the comments. Which one is your favorite? Next up, we've got rose pumpkins. And we're going to do something a little different. I've never used fusion paint. And we're going to try some milk paint. I got these from Julie's Signs and Designs. I will have her link in the description box below. The only reason I'm trying this fusion paint is because I want to use it on my kitchen cabinets. And I wanted to see what color it was. And it's a new color. It's a very pretty color. I like it a lot and it has a built-in primer and top coat which is very intriguing to me <laughs> but it's very pretty but I've never oh <laughs> do you see what I did <laughs> I just <laughs> I made a mess y'all <laughs> I got that everywhere <laughs> But I did one coat of the fusion paint. It has a top coat. And then I'm going to put the milk paint over it. And I'm going, I was hoping to get a crackle uh, and get the chippiness, you know, that we all hope for with milk paint. Um, I didn't get it. I had to force it. Uh, but I didn't do it in time. So I did have to end up going outside in the garage and sanding them. Um, I got a little bit of chippiness, but I had to do it on the second coat and I did it with my heat gun and it was just a little too late and the green didn't show through. So like I said, I had to go out and sand it off, um, but they're still pretty. I, I love how they turned out, but I... Like I said, see, I'm trying to, I'm trying to force that chip so bad. <laughs> I'm like, come on, chip, please. You can do it. I think this is a second coat. See, it chipped on the second coat.
And I was like, yes, I did. And it's too late. <laughs> See, that's what you want on the first coat. So I took them outside in the garage and sanded them. And they turned out beautiful. Now on these, I did use Big Top because it is milk paint. Milk paint is very temperamental. If you do not seal it with a wax or a top coat, it's going to come off everywhere. It's very messy. Um, but for the stems, I'm going to drill a hole and just put a little stick in them. I think those sticks I got from the dollar store, dollar family dollar or something like that. One of them, Dollar Tree, Family Dollar. Uh, but I end up using wood glue and sticking those in there. And again, I go very simple with the decorations on top. But with this one, I use the, I'm still drilling those holes and I want to tell you about the transfer. Come on, drill the holes, Aaron. I didn't know I left this many, this, this much drilling and I really wanted to show y'all how to drill a hole. Yep. It's, you're drilling a hole. Yep. Yep. And I, oh, I got to show you how to, that's my ladybug. Had to show you how to clean. Okay. Okay, now we get to put the transfers on. So I'm using May's Roses. I love this transfer because it's a neutral and it's so pretty. But I do use the script or the lettering. I didn't think I was going to, but I do end up using it. Um, it actually says May's 12 Blooming Roses co Cream Collection, or it says 12 Ever Blooming Roses in the middle, but I didn't use the 12 Ever Blooming Roses part because I didn't use all 12 roses. But I still wanted writing on each one. I thought that that would be cool. So... I did the transfers just like I did with all the other ones. Uh, you lay it down, pick up one of the corners, and as you're scratching it, just lift up and burnish it down after you've lifted up. Look how pretty. I love how you can just still see a little bit of that carriage house come through it's really pretty it's a really pretty color I really think I'm going to use them on my cabinets and it says it covers 75 square feet in that little bitty jar it's actually really good I love these roses they're so beautiful and they're actually a little bit antiqued looking so I actually decided not to go outside and sand them. I thought I was going to, but I actually I, I ended up not doing that. So I just burnish them down and I get my bucket of Sola um, wood flowers and pull out the roses with the um, with the wood petals and glue those down. Again, I wanted the top decor on these to be very simple because I wanted the, big, the the front of the pumpkins to be the centerpiece. Like, I wanted that to be the focus. I didn't want the tops to be the focus. So, I did that and then I was like, eh, it's still missing something. So, I got my tea towels back out. <laughs> And did um, a little finger bow, a double finger bow on each of them, and just off cut them at an angle on the bottom and just let them hang down the sides. And I think they turned out really cute. So I, t 
I glued one on each side of the stem. I love these. I think these are one of my favorites. I don't know. I can't decide if I like neutrals or if I like the dark colors for fall. I keep flip-flopping. So which ones do y'all like best? Do y'all like dark colors or do y'all like neutrals? What do y'all tend to gravitate towards? Look how these turned out. I love the softness and I love how that green peeks through. I love the solo flowers, of course, because they're just gorgeous. The tea towel, that always just reminds me of grandma for some reason and that just warms my heart. But I love the lettering, the florals, everything. Tell me what y'all think in the comments. Oh my goodness, y'all cannot wait. This is the pumpkin crate. Okay, I get this wood off of Facebook Market. They're like one by twos. See, I press them together and we're going to use the Holly Glen transfers and the pumpkin mold and our, our DOS clay. I press these planks together, okay? And I literally just drew the shape of a pumpkin and went and cut it out on my bandsaw. Now, if you do not have a bandsaw, you don't have to do this. You don't, if you want to make this, you don't have to do this. You can make this out of Dollar Tree stuff. The lady that I saw do it made it out of Dollar Tree stuff. You know, the, I, I know y'all know how to do mold stuff, so I'm not explaining. I'm, I'm putting clay in molds. Um, she used the table sitters that, were shaped like pumpkins that had, you know, you know, the writing on them. She used that as the sides. She used the signs, you know, the long signs. She used that as the bottom. And the one by two table signs, she used that as the slats. So you can do this with Dollar Tree items. You don't have to use real wood like I'm using. So you have options. I just chose to use it or to make mine out of real wood. But you don't have to use real wood. I'm just saying. But back to this. I'm just going to use the leaves and I'm going to put them on the pumpkins that I made to go on the sides for my crate. The pumpkins are going to be the end pieces of my crate. Okay? So I'm going to make the leaves to go at the top to decorate my pumpkin. And I, I think I make all the leaves twice. Yeah, I make all the leaves twice and then glue them on. There we go. <laughs> So I've got them all made up and I'm going to start gluing them on the sides of the pumpkin. These This turned out so cute. I think I want to make another one, but I think I want to make it smaller. I need to measure it because, I, like I said, this is, this is all scrap wood that I get off of Facebook Market and he sends a box and I, I think this guy is a match master at Tetris because the box that he sends me is there's no space left in that box. It is packed full and you cannot even stick a piece of paper in it and you get so much wood and it's way cheaper than even going and buying just an eight foot piece of one by two. And I can make so many of these and it's like five or six different species of wood. So 
if I wanted to make a cutting board or more crates like this, I can buy his boxes of wood and get so many species of wood and just make it that much more beautiful because it's going to be different colors and, you know, different pattern. Oh, I love, I love how these turned out. So I glued them all at the top different ways and we're going to use gypsy green again. Just, I don't know why I like gypsy green. It just, I think it's because it's, it looked like the green that they used on the front of the Holly Glen and the Fairy Holiday um, transfer. So I'm going to go in and paint all the leaves with the Gypsy Green. And it took a while because I didn't want to get it on the wood. So I had to go in with the artist brush and go on the sides and it took a minute. So I sped that up. So I'm going to pick my, my pictures and I picked the fox and the raccoon and then we're going to go in with the liquid patina and we're going to put a coat on the leaves and the wood because we're going to put the transfer down and I want to put some dark wax on the leaves because I don't want to leave them just that, you know, the, the matte gypsy green you want to seal the paint, right? So we're going to put the transfer down. Look at that raccoon. He's so cute with the little leaves and berries on his head. He's adorable. But we're going to scratch him down. Look how easy these go on, y'all. Just boop. So easy. And I'm barely pushing down. I could have done that with my fingernail, literally. So cute. And then I'm going to use a fox. And I positioned them to where they were facing in. And that's just personal preference. You you can pick whichever one you want to use. I, those are just the ones I chose. But they turned out so cute. Here I'm taking an X-Acto knife. Since these are pieced together boards... I'm cutting the transfer on the part where the board comes together so nothing will lift. So if any kind of air or anything gets under there through the boards, it's not going to lift that transfer. So we're going to just put a little bit of liquid patina over the transfer to seal it in. Then we're going to get DIY dark wax and go over the molds with the dark wax so it'll settle in all those nooks and crannies and wipe it back with a microfiber towel and then we're going to get some alchemy wax and it's green bur brigade I think I think that's how you say it mm, don't get me to lying but it turns out really cool it makes it look really whimsical it's not like gold it's still green, but it's like pearly green. It's so pretty. So we're going to start assembling. Okay, so y'all. Okay, I'm so excited. I can't wait. I can't wait for y'all to see it. Okay, we're going to put some wood glue on the bottom. Woo! Okay. Put the pumpkin, or put the one side Come on, Aaron. Okay. Put that up. Okay. Now we're going to bring out the brad nailer. I did not want this thing to come apart. Like I wanted to be able to stack stuff in it and be able to carry stuff around in it. And yeah, I wanted it to be solid. So I'm getting the brad nailer out. Plus, like I said, this is scrap wood. So... This is not all straight wood. So that's not technically laying flat against that rectangle. That pumpkin is not flat. So I'm going to make it sturdy. Sorry about my head. It, it gets in the way a couple times. Sorry. So 
So we're going to put it in, we're going to nail her in. I did the other side. Didn't think you needed to watch that. Y'all had to put it on the floor to get those other two in because my camera is too close and I had to flip it on its side. Yeah, I had to put it on the floor. So we're doing the other side. <laughs> I had to get it straight because it was going to irritate me if it wasn't straight. So now we're going to do the other side showing you that out of frame, of course. Yeah, of course it's out of frame. Why wouldn't it be out of frame? And we're going to put the second slat on. And I am putting wood glue along with the brad nails. So it's going to be solid. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> Look at it. It's so cool. Do you see me clap? <laughs> Y'all. I, I love it. I want to make a hundred of them. I just love how the Holly Glen transfers and the Fairy Mary transfers can transcend the fall holidays and the Christmas holidays and still work in your projects. That's the beauty of IOD. They're not just thinking of one holiday and they're beautiful. Tell me what y'all think in the comments. Remember to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and remember you're beautiful and you can do hard things. Thanks guys.